Welcome back to another edition of The Future Show. I'm your host, Juaria Tanvir, and it's been a while since I've been on The Future Show, but it's an absolute pleasure for me to return and for me to be hosting this Chawney High School for Girls special of Influential Women of the Future, along with my co-host, Emma Razem. We're going to be joined in the first half of the show with Miss Ponsonby, Assistant Head Teacher at Chawney High School for Girls, along with the Student Senior Leadership Team, Maria Siddiqui, Head Girl at Chorney High School for Girls, Destiny Lewis, Deputy Head Girl at Chorney High School for Girls, and Nadia Ahmed, the Senior Communication Executive at Chorney High School for Girls. Here is an interview that I have had with Ms Ponsonby and the Student Senior Leadership Team. I want to first thank you, Maria, Nadia and Destiny and Ms Ponsonby for joining us on The Feature Show. I know you ladies have already had your official last day of year 11, so thank you for coming back into school to join us in this very special episode of a Chawney Girls Only show. Um, You did have your last official day just over a week ago, and so thank you for taking time out of your very busy day. I'm sure you guys have now. Um, Speaking of last day, how was the last day? Nadia, if I come to you first, can you tell our listeners about how your last day of year 11 was? I really liked the last day. I see that was one one of my highlights of my experience. It was like a time where all of us could just come together stress-free and enjoy the day, and we had so many celebrations. It was a good way to end our Trony experience. Lovely. Destiny, anything to add on to that? Um, It was just a day where I think it summed up how Trony was for us. Um, we got to spend time with our friends, engage with other people in our year group. And I think the last um, like 10 minutes when we walked out and um, we were all together was something, something really memorable. Absolutely. And Maria? I think our last day was just a high note to show like what we guys really are and what we do as a school. And it's just encouraging each other, supporting each other and just being in each other's company, which the school's really good at when it comes to students are we supporting and just being happy together. I think the way we all interacted and how we tried to make our last day as good as possible and as good of a memory as possible. Absolutely. I did see some videos float around float around on Twitter and it definitely seems very fun and a really lovely way to kind of have that send off for you guys. And Miss Ponsonby, I'm sure you and many of the teachers uh, really wanted to make that memorable for the ladies. So can you kind of tell us about what your reasoning for was, what you guys decided? Yes, of course. So obviously this year has been very different for um, our lovely year 11s. And what we wanted to do was actually to make sure they had something memorable, um, given that we still need to socially distance and all these restrictions are still in place. We just came up with the idea that actually having like a staff tunnel, if you like, um, would be a really nice way just to send the girls off, given that they kind of lost their rite of passage to things like the prom things like uh, end of year trips. Um, So we just wanted something really memorable. And I think for me that day, it was really humbling um, to see the reaction of the girls coming out the door. Um, Had lots of the staff in tears, of course, because um, it meant so much to us to just see them off in a a special way. Um, I'll certainly never forget it. We've never done it before at Chalmers Girls. Um, And lots of photos and videos that I have seen as well really captured it lovely. Um, And it's just a really lovely way to just remember um, Majestic and the class of 2021. Absolutely. It definitely seemed like a really, really lovely, fun day. And I think it just kind of brought back some high school memories for me as well. And I think it is days like that where you begin to reflect on your high school years and you kind of think, uh, take a trip down memory lane. So on that note of reflection, if I kind of ask you guys, you have all been here for all your five years of Chawney Girls. And I'm sure the girls who came in at year seven are different to the girls who are now leaving at year 11. And you've probably learned a lot about yourself. So Maria, if I start off with you, what is one thing you've learned about yourself during your time here at Chawney? I've sincerely learned what I'm interested in because in Chawney you're offered so many opportunities that you really get to see what you like doing and so we had a debate team and I've always been self-conscious about would I be good at that or is that really what I want to do? But taking debate helped me learn different things that I like to do, like speech, doing speeches, actually having proper discussed arguments. It's also highlighted my interest for politics, which mm. I'll be taking for college. So things like that really sh- shaped what I want to do for the future. Lovely. And that is probably really good for your role as head girl as well, that skill set that it provides you with. 
Nadia, same question to you. What's one thing you've learned at Chorney Girls? I feel like I've learned that I can be quite resilient and I've, in my years at Chorney, I've faced so many difficulties, whether it be educational, friend-wise, and I feel like I've learned to become myself and I feel like it's taught me that I can be resilient, I can get through it. And that way I feel like I've developed as a person, I've developed my skills with every communication, confidence, and I feel like I've become a different person to who I was in year seven. Amazing. And I love that word resilience because that is one of the core values of Chorney Girls as well. And Destiny, same question to you. Um, I feel like when I came in year seven, I wasn't as confident in myself and I didn't take on as many opportunities. Mm -hmm. And I feel like um, I took a turning point and from then on, um, I've been given lots of chances to prove myself and show what I'm capable of. And I think that's one thing that Chorney is really good at doing which is giving the students the opportunity to shine in their own ways. Absolutely. And I do have to say, you guys are much more confident than I was when I was at high school, even when I was at college. So I am um, very inspired by all of you. And on that note of taking a trip down memory lane, what is one of your highlights being here at Chorney? So Maria, if I start off um, with you, what was one of your highlights? I believe Charity Week. I think that really highlighted how we can all work as a school together. But it's also given us many opportunities, as again, Tony does, is to adapt different skills because we'd be in groups, so that would be me needing leadership skills, we'll be needing to listening to other people's ideas, cooperation, organisation, just things like that. But also it's the atmosphere that during that week is where everyone's just producing and doing all these things, but it's for charity, it's no sort of self gain or anything like that. It's people coming together for a good cause, which I don't, I have never seen anywhere else. Do you know what, you're absolutely right. I feel like that focus on skills and that focus of really giving back to the community is something that's very unique and special to Chorney Girls. And I've definitely noticed that as well. Nadia, what's one of your highlights? Like Maria was saying, I'd go back to charity. So how we have Race for Life Pink Day. And I feel like it's such a good cause that it goes towards. And it's the fact that everyone can come in with their pink clothes and it, such nice pictures are taken it's such a good memorable moment and then we're also raising so much money we constantly raise so much money every single year we outdo ourselves and I feel like it's such a good time for everyone just to have some fun go out there run or walk their laps and it's like a time where we can all come together and celebrate such a good thing that our school is doing for other charities. Chorney girls definitely always exceed their targets and that is something that I'm going to come back to a little bit later on and um, Destiny what's one of your highlights? Um, adding on to what they both said, I feel like charity is a big thing at Chorney. Um, I don't think I've ever been here for a year where we haven't said we've exceeded what we did last year or we've exceeded our expectations. And um, especially on Race for Life, like Nadia said, we raised so much money and I feel like it's something that I don't think I'll ever get to experience that such a skill mm -hmm. ever again in my life because there's... Well, call it a thousand, one thousand, one hundred people at this school, and every single person makes their own contributions. I think that's what makes it special. Lovely. And Miss Ponsby, I'm sure you've seen these ladies grow from the small year seven girls to these incredible influential women they now are. What is one of your fond memories or highlights of these girls? I have many, of course. Um, but I think what I need to say is, you know, we have the three young ladies in front of me, plus the 207 others that are currently at home, hopefully listening to the show, um, watching them come through the door as these quiet little, you know, not very confident, um, but you knew there was huge potential. And for me, it's just watching every single student in the year group grow, blossom, develop, and these three ladies in front of me encapsulate developing influential women of the future. And when I hear Maria talking about um, an interest in politics I can absolutely see you heading that way and you know what I'd say is for me the aspirations of our young ladies and um, the three in front of me again plus many others for me the memories are just watching them grow and develop into these fantastic women who have got potential oozing from them and actually the brightest futures ahead and that makes me humble and it makes me feel massively proud of every single one of them. Absolutely. And I'm sure all the teachers listening to this will be feeling equally proud of all of you ladies and all the students would be very inspired by all of you as well. Um, now, I've started here at Chorney Girls this academic year, and unfortunately, I've not really had the chance to see all these amazing annual events that take place here that we do in usual years. 
Luckily, however, I am here next year, so I will get a chance to see that. But can you guys tell me and our listeners about some of the annual events that take place at Destiny, if I ask you to tell me one or two of them? Uh, so, as I said, charity is a big thing at Tony. So we have Race for Life, um, which is where um, for one day, um, for each period, each year group does 11 laps of our Astro Field. Um, and we wear pink, we raise money over the course of maybe two weeks. Um, we get fundraising um, for each individual. And I think that's one of the biggest events that we do at Chomi. And then we also have stuff like Good Causes Week, which is a week where um, over the duration of the week, we get to do our own events where we can raise money. Um, and then the last two days are the biggest days where we have um, stalls in the hall, um, we were in non school uniform, we bring money for that as well. So I think those two are probably the biggest ones that we have. Sounds like I have a lot to look forward to next year then. And Miss Ponsonby, I know Race for Life is one of your favourite days, if not the most favourite day of the year. Um, I've heard that in a couple of conversations you and I have had. The girls have mentioned they exceed their targets each year. What would you say drives the girls to really push themselves each time? I, I think for me, I, it's, I've never come across anything like it at Chorney Girls. And you're absolutely right, um, Joeria, where you've said it's unique because even other members of staff that have come from previous schools have turned around and said, I cannot believe how much money um, the girls raise. And I think for me, what it is, what, what drives them is they see the difference they can make to other people. And one of the things that they are really fantastic at, and all of our girls do this, is they go above and beyond. And sometimes what, what really makes me humble about that is that sometimes some of the girls don't have a huge amount themselves, but they'll go absolutely out of their way to make sure that they provide and they give for others who are less fortunate than themselves. So I think there's, you know, social action for us is massive. Um, it develops people, it develops leadership skills. And I think along the way, all we've ever done is just want us to do more. And I'd like to say the girls do that themselves because they see the difference they can make to people who are less fortunate. Absolutely. It is very inspiring and I look forward to seeing this all in action um, next year and all the years to come. Now, Nadia, I'm going to come back to you. Towards the end of last term, we had two alumni, Alia Khan and Farheen Ahmed, come into Chorney Girls to deliver a workshop. How important is it when you see ex Chorney Girls come in and how much of an impact does that have? So personally, we all felt like it had such a big impact on us, especially with it being such an important call to us. We felt like it was really important for someone to come in and talk to us, especially it being ex Tony girls. We feel like it was a comfortable environment. Therefore, we could speak really comfortably with them. We could express our opinions and they were easy to relate to, seeing as they were in our position not long ago. And I also feel like it was such an educational experience as many people weren't educated on the situation. And I feel like it fulfilled so many greater needs that we really needed. Brilliant. Thank you, Nadia. And I know Miss Ponsby is very passionate about alumni as well and just really strengthening that connection between current Chorney girls and ex Chorney girls. And I have no doubt, and I'm sure Miss Ponsby will agree with me on this, that in a few years, you girls will be added to that ever-growing list of the alumni and you will also be called upon. Um, Miss Ponsby, what was the importance and why was it so important for Chorney girls to bring in alumni? Um, to help deliver a workshop? I think sort of um, the alumni idea came to me quite a number of years back. I've been doing it for about five years now. Um, and the reason I did it is because I'm part of my own school alumni and quite often we get updates on the school. And I just thought it's really nice to keep in touch with your old school. And I think when we're talking about developing influential women, what's really fantastic for me is to actually see the success stories of our our students going, going ahead and, and making something huge from their lives um, and to get them back to actually inspire other students is why we did it. Um, with regards to the workshop that we held with um, Alia and Farheen, um, both very experienced in the field and the topic that they were, they were actually delivering to our students and what we wanted to do was provide that safe place and that comfortable place like Nadia mentioned where students could freely speak and actually have opinions but I think the power of alumni for me is influential to other people, motivating. We've used our alumni for various things. We've had some peer mentoring. We've had some little groups, um, sessions going on with um, sort of little behavior groups just to encourage people and actually make people realize that you can turn things around and anything you want in your life, you can achieve. So for me, alumni is hugely important um, and I'm really passionate about it. 
Um, these three young ladies have already signed up, as I hope most of Majestic have by now. Um, and we currently have 1,600 members of alumni. So we hope very, very soon to have some form of a reunion. Um, so for me, alumni is, is massive and really, really important for any school. Maria, coming back to you next. So being head girl, you have this amazing opportunity to um, really embody that school ethos of being that influential woman and um, inspiring the other students who are here. But with um, power comes great responsibility and sometimes tough decisions. If you could change one thing at Chorney Girls, what would it be? It'd be the approach to all the students, often the people who are classified as more able or gifted and talented, do get more opportunities or they're presented with more opportunities, such as we had book club, which is a really good opportunity to have, especially talk with other people. But that was a specific opportunity, which I was only able to have because of my more able title mm -hmm. or people who are less able, they quite well deserve to get support um, as they need. But then you have people who are, you know, in the middle, uh, I, I, I guess that's what you'd call them. And they just don't have that extra push to go for those more opportunities. And I feel like it's because they're intimidated and they'll see people who often get the roles and they'll be like, oh, they'll get it anyway. There's no point of me trying. But me personally, I didn't actually have the thought of going for head gal at first mm -hmm. because I didn't think I'd get it. And I realised what's stopping me from getting that role if I have an equal chance as everyone else. It's the mindset that people put them through that they believe that they're less than others. So then having from year seven, maybe just that push, because uh, because of that, I didn't join 25 voice from year seven, but maybe if I had that push that saying, if you do this, or if you have this sort of skills and if you build this up, maybe you can do it because we all start from the same point in year seven, everyone's yeah. new and fresh. So to be able to discuss what we really need to do would really help, especially people in the middle who just don't have that confidence yet. Okay, I really like that kind of personal story that you gave. And I think that's going to be relatable for so many students. So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, Destiny, if I come back to you again. Now, I'm sure, you know, you kind of look back at your year 11 experience and you might think, oh, I wish I kind of did this a little bit differently. Um, what advice would you give to new year 11s based on your year 11 experience? I would say... It's important to work hard, obviously, you have to make sure that you get your GCSEs just so that you have a better start when you go to college. But I would also say make sure that you don't overwork yourself too hard mm -hmm. because your mental health is important um, and you should always prioritise it because unless you're mentally in the place to proceed with your life, you won't be able to do it to the best of your ability. So I would say manage your time well. Um, don't put off a vision because if you put off a vision, it's going to make it way harder. You're going to be like two months, you left your GCSEs and you have all this work to cram in from like three years of um, being at school, that GCSE course, and you have two months to cram it all in for every single subject. And I think that's really not a good idea. So I would recommend um, spacing out your vision, making sure that you have a good timetable and enjoying it while you can, because high school is one of the best, I think, parts of your education that you experience. Absolutely. High school is definitely where you spend quite a large chunk of time during your education experience. So it is really important to make the most of it. Um, great. We've had a really nice conversation just kind of reflecting back on your high school um, experience, sharing some memories. Let's now kind of look ahead. So Maria, if I come to you first, what are your aspirations career wise um, and sort of your more immediate plans moving forward? My immediate plans is to settle myself well for college so there's nothing that's a big shock to me. I, I don't want to take the time that we have off for granted, probably look into the courses more, see what's available for me to help myself in my own time. But also because if I develop this type of habit before, it'll help me later on, where I'd like to hopefully, depending on what sort of position I'm in, either take an apprenticeship or go to university. Because um, luckily I do have a set plan of what I want to do, so I'm not confused. I would like to go into the route of corporate law or anything towards law and politics, something like that. And I believe having an apprenticeship in those type of fields would really help because you can pick up that work experience, which I think is really essential for those type of careers, but also still go into 
your education or further it. Okay, brilliant. And Nadia, same question to you. So hopefully I want to move on to college to do um, history, English literature and psychology. And um, hopefully I would, you know, prepare myself for this and make sure I stay on track in order to get the highest possible grades I can. But then I'd like to take a gap year. And in this gap year, I'd like to either work or do a bit more work experience, hopefully in a law firm, seeing as I want to go to study law in university. And I feel like because it's such a competitive um, subject, being law, I feel like work experience would really help me not only prepare myself, but also with other people. And I feel like that would be a great way for me to prepare myself for university. Brilliant. And Destiny, same question to you. Um, so I'm going on to college to do maths, economics and law. Um, I hope that once I finish my A-levels, I'll be able to, whatever at the time fits best for me, take an apprenticeship or go to university. Um, and I want to work in the economic field. Um, and I just want to make sure that I take the right steps to do whatever is best for me, because I don't want to... The traditional route of taking university is... Um, is always preferred in some ways, I guess you could say, but sometimes it's not the best option. Sometimes apprenticeships are better for you, depending on what you want to do. So at the time, I'll make that decision or whether I want to take an apprenticeship or go to university and hopefully go far with that career path. Okay, brilliant. Also, can I just add, ladies, do not forget to have fun over the summer because you do deserve it. Um, now, we might have some younger listeners who are listening in, so like year seven, you know, year sixes who might be coming on to year seven and they want to kind of hear from Chawney girls to kind of give an idea of what they're going into. What advice would you give to any new year, year sevens coming in? Nadia, if I come to you first. So the first thing I'd say is enjoy your first few years. I personally feel like I overworked myself in key stage three, so year seven, eight and nine. And I feel like I should have spent more time to enjoy it. There's so many annual events so many fun things to take part in, but I don't think I enjoyed it to its full potential because I was stressed out and overworking myself. And I feel like these are the years that you need to find yourself and learn what you're comfortable with. Mm. And then when obviously as you get older, key stage four, I feel like that's when you should start preparing yourself for your GCSEs. But in the first few years, just enjoy it. Enjoy it, have fun, lovely. Maria, same question to you. I'd say don't take the time for granted. And when I say this, I don't mean work, work, work. Mm. I mean, we're here for five years and you'll hear a lot of teachers tell you from the beginning it's really short and it'll go by and you often think it probably won't because five years seems like a lot of time but we're all in year 11 and we realize it's actually it's, it's blew by past us and we didn't even realize but when I say don't take time for granted just enjoy what you have and what you're doing and if you really take your time in lessons and then see what's see what's really for you it will help you also take a decision for what you want to do for GCSEs because often people will just have a last minute decision of, I don't know what I want to take or which GCSE, which GCSE should I do when it comes to the point where they have to sort their GCSEs. And to just avoid all that stress is just enjoy your time and lessons, have fun with your friends, because generally we're what, 11, 12, and it's not the time to put stress on yourselves. Mm -hmm. And if you put in yourself in this mindset of a stress-free attitude, it will help you a lot in key stage three, because as Nigel was saying, once you've put in this, Put yourself in this like stressful dilemma it's difficult to get out of because you've put these harsh expectations on yourself which i think which no one expects of you is just to do your best that's what it is amazing and you're absolutely right five years do definitely fly by destiny if you briefly tell us as well advice for new year sevens um i would just say um follow what you want to do um it takes time to for some people to find out what they really want to do with their life. Obviously you're only in year seven, but start finding what you want to do now because it will help you a lot when you get to like year 11. Like I was in, when I started year 11, I was still unsure about which path I wanted to take. It took me time to really sit down and look at courses and stuff. So make sure that you, at least by like year 10, year 11, have started to think about more options for yourself. Okay, great. So take that time to really just figure out your interests. Lovely. And Miss Ponsby, if I finish up with you, we've heard some really wonderful conversations from these incredible influential women. Mm -hmm. How proud does it make you um, hearing these incredible conversations? I think I've already said um, the word I'd probably use to summarise um, all the students at Shawnee Girls, but particularly this year 11 group, um, just humbled by how well they've, you know, their resilience has been huge over the past year. 
Um, they haven't had a normal key stage four of any description, but they've all come through this end. Um, they're still smiling despite the tears at the end when they left us all and they clearly missed us all every day. Um, but I feel immensely proud to have been on this journey with all of the girls um, and just watching them grow, like I said earlier. Um, and I really am so excited about their futures and having them back as members of our alumni to inspire the next generation. Amazing. And I am unfortunately um, having to say that we are approaching the end of the first half of this show. And I am quite gutted to say that because I've genuinely enjoyed listening to this conversation and speaking with the incredible ladies and just seeing you embody that school ethos of influential women. And I, I'm sure it's very inspiring to many other students who are listening. Um, listeners, do stay tuned in for after the break where you will be joined by Amir Azam, who will be speaking with a senior leadership team here at Chorney Girls, Joe Myers and Nick Ponsonby. And I just want to say thank you to Maria, Nadia, Destiny and Ms. Ponsonby for joining me in this half of the show. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Welcome back to the second half of this Chorney High School for Girls special of Influential Women of the Future. Before the break, we heard the student senior leadership team, head girl Maria Siddiqui, deputy head girl Destiny Lewis, and Nadia Ahmed, senior communication executive of Chorney Girls, share their reflections of their time at Chorney Girls, as well as give advice for current and new students. You're now going to be joined by my co-host, Amarazam, who will be speaking with Joe Miles, head teacher at Chorney High School for Girls, and Nick Ponsonby, assistant head teacher at Chorney High School for Girls talking about achieving that incredible achievement of outstanding by Ofsted in January 2020, as well as the social action projects Chorney Girls takes pride in and much more. I want to direct my first question to, to you, Joe. Describe the last 15 months at, at Chorney Girls because the world's been turned upside down, um, but you and your staff have got a, a school to run and by all accounts, you've run it really, really well. Like like everyone in education, you've gone above and beyond. So describe that that feeling right at the beginning for Chorney Girls and you as the head teacher. Well, if we think back to March 2020, I think it was the 20th of March when the girls went home for the last time and then we didn't see um, many of them until until September. And I think at first... I think me, the leadership team and staff probably felt a little bit overwhelmed, but also not quite sure what lay ahead of us. But even though it's been a huge challenge, I think the girls and their families have risen absolutely magnificently to that challenge, as well as our teaching staff and our support staff. So right from the beginning, our pastoral team were on the phones and on the emails to all the girls to check that they were all right. Teachers were setting work on Google Classroom. So I think teachers would say that they've learned a lot. They've learned a lot about technology. They've learned a lot about how to do things remotely and how to give feedback remotely. So I think in some ways we've learned, we've learned a lot about teaching and learning. But I think for me, what shines through are our three R's respect, ready and resilience, that the girls were ready. They're always ready for any challenge and they've certainly risen to this. They've been incredibly resilient right the way through. And they've also been respectful. They've been respectful of each other. They've been respectful of their teachers. And they've also continued to do what they did at school, which is think about others. So a lot of them were raising money for the NHS doing cake sales, all manner of things. So they were still engaging in all those things that they would have done um, when they were at school. So I think a challenge, but one that I think the school's risen to. And, um, you know, if I may, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank all of the parents and carers, because without them, um, none of the work that the teachers um, have done would have would have been worthwhile because it's the parents that were supporting the girls day in day out at home and i suppose in amongst all of that um there was a little announcement uh just before <laughs> lockdown about the um the incredible ofsted outstanding um 
you, you didn't really have a chance to to really um, celebrate that with, with with the team here and 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 your parents and your learners. No, because the the inspection, as you know, was right at the beginning of January, the second week back after the Christmas holidays. But by the time the inspection report was ready, it was the 11th of February. And we could only then announce it the week afterwards. So we didn't have much chance. But we did get the whole school together to make the um, announcement. And that was Miss Ponsonby who suggested that we get everybody into the sports hall. And we did that and we had outstanding on, um, you know, letters and we held we held them up. And there is footage of that on the uh, on our Twitter account. And that was just an amazing moment, actually, for for the staff and for the girls and that we were all together for that announcement. So I think that was a great that was a great moment. But you're right. We've not had chance to fully celebrate that. And I suppose this is the start of thinking about all of that again um, and hopefully soon we'll be able to welcome people into the school to see the school's work because one of the one of the inspectors said to us in the feedback it's not written in the report but he said in the feedback um, would I would I tell people to travel a hundred miles to visit this school yes I would so hopefully by September will be able to welcome all those people in that want to hear about the school's work and want to meet the girls. And Nick, your thoughts um, about the past uh, 15 months as, as one of the senior leaders here? Uh, very similar to, to what Joel's already mentioned, but I think um, what I do need to do is absolutely take and give credit to all of our girls. Their resilience levels have been phenomenal. Um, like Joel mentioned, just getting on with things, um, really desperate to get back to school and we were really desperate to see them. So we really did maintain that contact with the girls as much as we physically could. Um, we did a little video for them where all the staff put in like sort of about how much we were missing them. Um, and I think that was gratefully received. And another thing that we did, um, and I think this really kept the resilience levels up with our students, and that was around, we had a Wellbeing Wednesday, which Mrs. Masters very kindly organised. Um, and we had daily challenges going on for, I think it was three months altogether. And that really kept, kept the spirits alive for the girls and, and actually made them realise that we were still thinking about them, even though we weren't physically seeing them. So, you know, a tough year for teaching but we absolutely learned lots about the profession we learned lots about our own resilience as well as teachers and, and professionals in education in education um and i think you know reflecting on it it's hopefully we're nearing the end um but everybody in school has just come together huge amounts of teamwork um, and collaboration with each other to make sure we fully supported not only ourselves as staff but the students as well so an interesting year for everybody, um, but we've all come out the other end and we're ready to, to go again. Um, just going back to Joe, the, um, the, the difficulties that um, the, the, suppose the students have had to endure and having to adapt along the way as well. Um, some of them will have uh, built stronger characters as, as a result as well, and the school has done um, what you can to uh, support them through that as well. But some of them will be going on to that onward journey. Some of them may have missed out that feeling. What, what have you done to ensure that they 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 haven't they haven't missed out as as much as well? Because um, as I understand, you've you've, you've made a, 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 a strong commitment to ensuring that they, that you are able to support them as best you can. Well, if we think about Year Elevens, they're the ones that are um, the, the girls that are moving on to the the sixth form, um, and I think you know for the Year Elevens, it's been a difficult two years because they've had not only their Year Eleven disrupted, but their Year Ten disrupted uh, as well. But as Nick said, the thing that shines through is their resilience. We tried to make their leaving day um, as special as it could be because we couldn't do a leavers assembly. Um, but we clapped them all out of the building. So we lined up just outside the building in rows and clapped them all out. And I think they really, I think the girls really appreciated uh, that. Um, and that's a really quite a symbolic thing to do really for for the for the students and it's I think also it was it's that respect at one of the three hours the respect from us to them so applauding their resilience uh, and in, uh, applauding their readiness to learn in terms of um, 
girls missing out generally on their on their learning. Um, I think the school has done as much as it can in terms of getting laptops to students and Chromebooks to students, um, getting um, phone calls to to students, and actually as we got as we went further on, we got much better in terms of feedback. So we had teachers were then giving verbal feedback on a on a little app that's called Moat, and the girls really liked hearing their teachers' voices. And I think that's one of the things that they missed. But by doing that, by using the technology to give them feedback on their work, and they would then send messages back to their teachers. So even though they weren't seeing their teachers in the same way, there was still that contact, uh, that contact with them. And since they've been back in school, um, teachers have been doing all they can, particularly with year year eleven, just in that run up to the um, the centre assessed uh, grades. Um, I hear the term influential women of the future, and it's become synonymous with uh, with, with Chorney girls as well. So tell us. Tell us what that means for, a, say, a, a Year 7 student that's going to be entering in September. And tell us what that meant for the Year 11s who are now moving on to the next step in, the, in, their, in their journeys. Yeah. I think for us, um, Influential Young Women in the Future is about making sure that the girls have got the confidence and the skills and the knowledge to make a difference to their local community and to the wider community, whether that's nationally or internationally, as they as they move forward in their studies and their and their careers. So it's giving them the academic qualifications, the very best that they that they can achieve um, for themselves individually. That's a key part of it. But also another key part of it is to give them experiences and opportunities that enable them to develop to develop those skills. So the school does a lot in terms of social action that Nick Ponsonby um, organises. And that really gives the girls those opportunities to be entrepreneurial, to be influential, to see that they can make a difference on their doorstep. And then also that they can make a difference further afield. Because once they know that they can do that locally, they know that they can then do that on a broader, on a broader scale. So that's, for us, what Influential Young Women is about. Mm -hmm. um, Nick, um, social action seems to be something that is, you're so passionate about and, mm -hmm. and, and listeners would have been listening to the interview with the girls um, before, the, before, the, um, before the break. And um, that, what... what, what um, what Joe's described there about the you know influential w young women of the future and, and building those characters and mm -hmm. developing those skills so, seems to be such an important part of the work the school does, but also you, you leading on that as well. Um, so tell us tell us a little bit more about the you know, charitable projects that mm -hmm. the school have been involved in and and, and the other kinds of. Um, initiatives in the community? Sure. Um, the first thing I need, I need to start by saying is that social action has always existed at Chorney Girls, but what I think we've done is we've recognised how it can develop our young people um, and we've taken every opportunity to to you know get involved with our community, um, give the girls opportunities to be involved with outside agencies, with charities. And what we've recognised is it's not all about the amount of money we raise, but we are, however, renowned for raising huge amounts of money for all of the charities that we've raised money for. Um, but that is not why we do it. We actually do it to develop influential women of the future. And I think, you know, we've been involved in a, in a number of initiatives um, very close to us, things like our Race for Life annually. Unfortunately, we hope to have that back in October um, because we haven't been able to hold that this year. Um, but at the, you know, the last one of those, it was £12,570 in a day. Um, we've had very good links with Luden Food Bank and we held the sort of the, the harvest project uh, and we gathered, I think it was nearly 10,000 items on those days. Um, Luton and Dunstable Hospital, um, again, that sort of ties into the Race for Life. More recently, um, we've raised almost £2,500 for Islamic Relief, um, and that was contributing to what was happening in the Middle East. Um, and I think for us, it's, the girls are always looking for ways to help others less fortunate than themselves. And it's something that will never stop them in their tracks of doing that because they love making a difference to people. They love making a difference to people on their, on their doorstep. And it's probably also worth talking about um, 
the current year rights are taking place uh, taking part in the first give project so we've got a number of local charities that are really going to benefit from that and some of the work that the year rights are, are doing to fundraise and um, we've got some fantastic artwork we've had some cake sales we've got some teddy bear sales um, and the girls really take that and they have complete ownership of that um, so we're really excited about the first give project it'll be coming to an end probably around july time so of course you'll see on twitter our figures for that um, but we really pride ourselves on social action um, all for the right reasons about developing young women um, and influential women of the future brilliant thank you and just just reflecting on on, on the interviews with um, maria nadia and, and destiny the what, what what struck me and i'm sure the listeners would agree would be the maturity as well their, their reflections of the past few uh, mm -hmm. few years but that that sense of uh, almost that responsibility that they, they an acknowledgement that you know what they've they've spent five years at a mm -hmm. school but they've come out so much stronger yeah. resilient as well and I think a lot of the girls um, in the interview, um, and rightly so, they did talk about social action and all of the opportunities they've had um, among many um, at Chalmy Girls on their five-year journey. Um, but I think what, what it was for me, it was, it was sort of that moment where I sit and I go, and this is why we do what we do every single day. Because you see these young ladies coming in in year seven, quiet, lacking in confidence sometimes, and you see them leaving in year 11, sitting doing a radio interview as influential women um, and they've got bright futures ahead um, and it's just really the pinnacle of, of what we do. Mm. <clears throat> it's also been quite pleasing to see uh, um, the alumni uh, involvement as well so despite the, the difficulties of the, of, of the past 15 months and having having guests in, and, and, and the like as well you have that strong sense of connection to the alumni as well. Tell us a, a little bit more about that. Yeah, so the alumni has been up and running at Chorney Girls for about the, the past five years. Um, we currently have over 1,600 um, ex Chorney Girls, which is brilliant. Um, and obviously, listeners, if you are listening um, and you'd like to join, please do have a look at Future First. Um, and you can join really easily. Um, for me, I mentioned in my interview with the girls, but the, the power of alumni um, is, is hard to describe um, because you've got people that have been through our school, been through the journey, have gone on different pathways into their career and success stories, and they're all so keen to come back and support and develop our young people and our girls for us. Um, so for me, um, it's something I personally am passionate around, around, but I know that the school also really supports the work that we do with alumni. Um, and I think to have... Um, some of our old Tony girls come back and be influential and actually aspire, you know, and encourage all girls to be aspirational in what they do, then I, th I think it's the most powerful thing that we have as a school. It's a really fantastic tool. Thank you. Um, Joe. Let's, let's speak a little bit about, you know, um, your teaching staff and the support staff and everyone else that that drives drives the school forward as well. Um, what sort of words would you use to describe them? And let's start off with the the lady to your right here. <laughs> um, I think I think the girls we're enormously lucky to have the 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 girls that we've got in this school and their families and their carers. But I think also we're really lucky to have staff at the school that um, absolutely in their bones want to make the school better and better. And I think Nick is a really good example of, of that because a school doesn't eventually become outstanding without a huge amount of effort and commitment. And I think Nick's commitment to social action has really made a difference to the girls' experiences, because it is, um, you know, I I come from a you know a different school where I was at for a long while, and this the social action and making a difference, and the girls' entrepreneurial skills and their organisational skills and their commitment to that is unique. I've not seen it before like like this, and it doesn't come out of. It doesn't come out of nowhere, so that's really supported by staff um, such as such as Nick. Um, but across the school, we have got staff who are absolutely who were were committed to us be, becoming outstanding and are committed to us maintaining and developing that. And really, that one of the key words I would use is collaborative, 
because these things don't happen without everybody working together uh, on that. So our Ofsted Outstanding didn't happen without everybody committing themselves to making it so. In the classroom, with the students, with teaching assistants, either in small groups or in the classroom, with all the admin team, all the, you know, the, all the back work that they do that's invisible, but is really important to a school. So I would say collaborative um, is one way I would describe our staff and committed. Um, I would describe our staff to they're the two key things that I would uh, and aspirational. Um, the girls are really aspirational for themselves and so are their families and the staff meet those aspirations. Nick, anything to add? Uh, no, I, I think, um, you know, we talk about Team Chorney um, and I think Joe's kind of hit everything there really on the head with um, how we describe our staff. And I think it's, you know, everybody's in it for this, the moral purpose that they should be and that is for the benefit of all of our girls who come through the doors at Chorney Girls. Um, so, you know, really committed staff, really enthusiastic staff and passionate staff about what they do every day. Can I just say, I always say that schools are where children should achieve more than might ever have been expected. And that was the case for me when I was at school and it was the case for my brother. And it's it's one of the things that I'm really committed to and I know our staff are as well. That's what we're here for, to ensure that they achieve more than might ever have been expected, both socially and academically. Um, Nikki, uh Listening to the first half of this show, um, you, you, you described yourself as, as being humbled by the Year 11s and the, the, that development in their character and, um, and, and that growth as well. Um, what, what, what did you mean by that? I think what it is, it's obviously, you know, um, and this will be useful for any um, Year 6 parents or Year 6 students that are currently listening that are going to join us very, very shortly. Um, you know, I used to be ahead of Year 7 for quite a, a significant amount of time. And for me, what I meant by that is it's humbling to see the journey that we send our girls on from the minute they walk through the doors at Chorney Girls until the minute they leave. We provide them with every single opportunity that we can. Um, and I just need to mention here that I guess student leadership side is also something that we're really proud of as a school and that stems from year seven we don't wait until they're year 11 and they can be a prefect we talk about year sevens being you know buddies being form captains being sports captains um we've got the house system so we've got subject captains that are all based in key stage three so key stage three get a flavor of what it's like to be a leader and what we found is just listening to um maria destiny and nadia in that interview it actually kind of makes you choke a little bit because you see the journey they've been on and you see that these three quiet, you know, lovely, lovely students came through our doors and they're all on the senior prefect team. They're all really influential to each other and actually really motivational to younger students as well and fantastic role models. So what I meant by that was just for me encapsulating the journey that they've been on for the five years and watching them leave, walking out of here as as the women that they're going to be and the future they've got ahead of them is just so so bright and i cannot wait to hear all about it anything to add Joe? Sure. no i think i think nick's encapsulated it really i think sometimes what we find what i find humbling about our girls is that actually i think we learn as much from them as they learn from us and i think that's often underestimated in schools so i have learned an enormous amount from from the girls since I've been here um, and it's just about their the care that they've got for others their commitment to their own studies and their own learning and their own development um, is also humbling so they manage to do all of these things all at the same all at the same time um, and I think I think they're incredible role models for for other girls in other schools um, and they are an inspiration to, to us um, every day. Coming up to the end of the show, I just, just want to get your, your thoughts, uh, Joe. Um, what's the future hold for Chorney Girls? Because 
in order to retain that status, you need to carry on doing those things, you know, yeah. ensuring that everyone remains, um, you know, completely, completely at the top of their game as well. So, so what now as we start thinking about maybe re returning to some degree of normality? Well, we're starting to, to think about um, what makes a world-class school. Um, and I think that's something that Nick will probably lead on in, in September. Um, just thinking about how to, to make sure that, that teachers continue to be supported to develop their practice um, so that they can support the girls as best they can in, in the classroom. So teaching and learning will continue to be a focus. But the girls, the, the girls' development... Um, both locally, nationally, and even internationally, will become more of our focus as well, so that so that they get a, if you like, um, a bigger stage on which to um, on which to show how brilliant they uh, they are, and and that will be part and parcel of us celebrating our outstanding status, and hopefully being able to welcome people into the school to show them all that work. Um, and then to continue to develop it on all fronts so that each and every girl that comes through our doors does her best in every way. Very briefly then, a bright future, it sounds like, for, for Chorney girls. Absolutely. and I think Exciting times. What, what I'd sort of finish with, I'm, I'm going to actually say something that Joe quite often talks about to, to all of the staff, and that is um, outstanding schools don't stand still. So, you know, at Chorney Girls, we, yes, we've got our fantastic status, but we, we're always looking for more and we constantly strive for more. Um, and Joe quite often talks about beyond outstanding, um, hence the world class sort of schools and things coming in there. But I think it's just important for listeners to know that just because we have the status, it doesn't mean that we stop doing anything that we do um, and we're looking forward to the future. Listeners, you've been joining us on the Future Show on Inspire FM. I've been your host, uh, Amar Azam. I want to thank my co-host, uh, Javier Tanvir, uh, before the break. Uh, and uh, thank you, uh, Joe Miles and Nick Ponsonby. Thank, thank you for you. having us. Listeners, listeners, well, we look forward to uh, you joining us again in the future.